Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, wise tales from around the world which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello and how are you? The trickster tale we're going to hear today is another Anansi the Spider tale told by Toot. And Nancy tales are particularly popular in West Africa and in the Caribbean. I wonder who your favourite trickster is. Do you like Kojo the rabbit or Anansi the spider? They're from West Africa. Or do you prefer Djibouti, the clever little tortoise from Brazil who tricked the beast Kibungu? Or do you prefer the wolf dog Coyote from North America? Why don't you have a little think and decide which is your favourite while we have a quick word with the grown-ups. Hello, super great kids. I'm back. Did you decide which your favourite trickster is and why? I think I rather like Djibouti the tortoise because she's small and slow and yet she can outwit leopards and beasts like Kibungu. Shall we start the story? Are you ready? Here's two. Welcome, 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 each and every one, to Super Great Kids Stories. I would like to share with you all an Anansi story. You know, if I was to say to you, Crick, could you reply, Crack? Let's go. Crick. Crack. Yes. One day, Anansi and Brother Tiger, who are the best of friends, they have a business. Their business is in the market, buying and selling their cups and plates and knives and forks and spoons and jugs. They load their things up upon their cart and they make their way to the market. When they reach the market, they lay out all their wares. You know, it so happened that Sister Chicken, she always is there at the entrance of the market, looking and waiting for when Brother and Nancy and Brother Tiger come. And when Brother and Nancy and Brother Tiger, they leave the market, Sister Chicken is always standing there waiting. One day, Brother Tiger comes to Brother and Nancy and says, Brother and Nancy, I do believe that Sister Chicken likes me. But I am afraid to speak with Sister Chicken because of my large, sharp teeth. Brother Nancy, will you go and speak to Sister Chicken for me? Ask Sister Chicken if I can take her to the dance, maybe next week. Ah, says Nancy, no problem, no problem, no problem. I will go and speak with Sister Chicken. So there is Anansi, scuttling down the road, on his way to go and see Sister Chicken. When he reaches there, he says, Hello, Sister Chicken, how are you? Sister Chicken stands there. Hi, Anansi. Ah, oh, says Anansi, Sister Chicken. I think you like Brother Tiger, is that so? Says Sister Chicken, yes. Brother Tiger's very strong. Brother Tiger works for himself. Brother Tiger has his own business with you. Oh, Brother Tiger with that stripy jacket. Oh, he looks so fine. 
What, says Brother Ranansi, don't you know that Brother Tiger is my old riding horse? <laughs> says Sister Chicken, never, never. I do not believe such a thing. Oh, of course, says Brother Ranansi. Brother Tiger is my old riding horse, and I used to ride him in and out of the market. Maybe you've never seen. <laughs> says Sister Chicken, never, never, never have I seen anyone riding a tiger before. Brother Ranansi said to Sister Chicken, listen, Sister Chicken. Next market week, if you see me riding upon the back of Brother Tiger, will you allow me to take you to the dance instead of Brother Tiger? Oh, says Sister Chicken, if I see you riding upon the back of Brother Tiger, surely you can take me to the dance. Oh, and Nancy leaves Sister Chicken and scuttles back down the road. When Nancy reaches his house, there is Brother Tiger waiting. What did she say here, Brother Nancy? Ah, oh, says Brother Nancy. She says, next market week, maybe you can take her to the dance. But Brother Tiger... I think I still need to go and speak to Sister Chicken to arrange the time and the place where this will take place. Do you understand? Of course, of course. Then I go home and I wait until market week arrives. And Brother Tiger was gone. Well, you know, the days they passed and the days they came. And when the market week came... Brother Tiger came to the house of Brother and Nancy knocking on the door. But there was no sound and no reply. Brother Tiger knocked again. And there, behind the door, came a weak voice. Uh, <coughs> push the door, Brother Tiger. I'm very weak. I can't get out of bed. Oh. Brother Tiger pushed the door. When the door was open, there in the bed, with the covers pulled up close to his chin, laid Brother and Nancy. Brother Tiger asked, Brother and Nancy, why are you lying in your bed? We have market day. Rise up, Brother and Nancy. You were going to speak to Sister Chicken. Brother and Nancy, please. But Brother and Nancy said, But Brother Tiger, can't you see? <coughs> I'm not well. <coughs> I've got a cold and a sore throat and my limbs are all really, really weak. <coughs> I don't think I can go to market today. Oh, said Brother Tiger, but please, you are going to speak on my behalf to Sister Chicken. Brother Nancy said, Well, Brother Tiger, maybe I can go. <laughs> Look, if you go to the barn, you will see there, there is a saddle. If you can strap the saddle to your back, and if you can put the pannier, the pannier that's got all the goods, the knife, the fork, the cup, the spoon, the plate, either side, then I will be able to come riding on your back. Will you carry me, Brother Tiger? Is that okay? Brother Tiger said yes. I am strong. I am very strong. And so Brother Tiger went into the barn and he found the old riding saddle and he put that upon his back. He found the big panniers, like big bags. And he filled them up with the knives, the forks, the cups, the spoons, the plate. There was one hanging on the right and one hanging on the left, either side of Brother Tiger. Brother Tiger was strapped up. He went to the house of Brother and Nancy said, I am ready. Brother and Nancy was already dressed from head to foot with his trousers and jacket and shoes lying there in the bed. And before Brother Tiger could realize anything, up jumped Brother Anansi sitting on the back of Brother Tiger. Ah, oh, said Brother Anansi. Brother Tiger, it's very kind of you to take me on your back. Let us go. And so they started. 
making their way to the market. Of course, at the entrance of the market, there is Sister Chicken waiting. She sees Brother and Nancy riding upon the back of the tiger. Sister Chicken, her eyes open wide and she clucks. Brother and Nancy, when he eyes Sister Chicken, he straddles Brother Tiger and he takes the reins into his hands and he begins to ride Brother Tiger like a horse. Giddy up, come on, Brother Tiger, come on, come on, come on, Brother Tiger, come on, come on, come on, Brother Tiger, come on, come on, come on, Brother Tiger, come on, come on. Brother Tiger says, Brother Nancy, why are you pushing me? Why are you pushing me? Brother Nancy says, it's the fear. Fever. I've come over all sick. It's the fever. Come on, brother tiger. Come on, come on. Come on, brother tiger. Come on, come on. Before you know it, brother tiger and brother Nancy, they pass sister chicken and make their way into the market. Brother Nancy falls weak once again. Oh, sorry, brother tiger, says brother and Nancy. It was the fever. My head was spinning all over. My body was shaking. I'm really sorry, brother tiger. Brother tiger said, don't you worry. I could see that sister chicken. She could see that I was strong. Come. And they laid out their knives, their forks, their cups, their spoons, and their plates. And they did good business that day. And before you knew it, market day was over. Brother and Nancy, he was there. He said, Brother Tiger, I'm a little bit weak. Brother Tiger said, but Nancy, you said you would speak to Sister Chicken to arrange the meeting point. Will you not try and speak with her now? Okay, said Brother and Nancy. And Brother Nancy scuttled off. He saw Sister Chicken, and he asked Sister Chicken, Sister Chicken, now tell me something. Did you see me riding upon the back of the tiger? Sister Chicken said, I could not believe it, but there I saw you riding upon the back of the tiger. But I do not believe that you will leave the market riding on the back of that tiger. Brother Nancy said, well, you will see. But may I take you to the dance if I am? Sister Chicken said, yes, you can. And before you know it, Brother Nancy scuttled back to Brother Tiger, saying to Brother Tiger, Brother Tiger, Sister Chicken says that she will meet you later this evening. But come, Brother Tiger, I am tired now. Will you carry me upon your back again? Brother Tiger said, yes, of course, I am strong. And before you know it, the saddle was put upon the back of Brother Tiger. The bit was placed within his mouth like a horse. And before Brother Tiger could say anything, Brother and Nancy jumped up and sat upon the back of Brother Tiger. Holding the reins, Brother Nancy said, come, let us go. And the two of them rode out of the market. With Brother and Nancy sat upon the back of Brother Tiger. As before, there at the entrance was Sister Chicken. She wanted to see if it's true. Would Brother and Nancy be upon the back of Brother Tiger? And there sat a Nancy. When a Nancy saw Sister Chicken, he straddled the tiger like a horse. He took the reins into his hand and said, Come, Brother Tiger, come on. Ah, oh, come on, Brother Tiger, come on. Ah, oh, come on, Brother Tiger, come on. Ah, oh, come on, Brother Tiger, come on. Brother Tiger said, Brother and Nancy, why are you pushing me? And Brother Nancy said, It's the fever. I can't help it. It's the fever. Oh, come on, Brother Tiger, come on. Ah, come on, Brother Tiger, come on. And before you know it, as they left the market behind them, Brother Nancy became weak again. I'm sorry, Brother Tiger. The fever took hold of me. I was shaking and shivering all over. My head was swimming. I will go home and take rest. 
By this time, they reached the house of Brother Nancy. Brother Nancy leapt off the back of Brother Tiger. Brother Tiger said, I go and make myself ready. I wear my finest stripy coat. And he left. As soon as Brother Tiger was gone, Brother Nancy, he dressed himself. He went straight back to the market. And there was Sister Chicken. Brother Nancy said, Well, Sister Chicken, tell me something. Who do you prefer to take you to the dance? An old riding horse or me? Brother Nancy. And Sister Chicken clucked. <laughs> Brother Nancy, you can take me to the dance. And before you know it, Brother Nancy and Sister Chicken, they strolled off and went into the dance. But then, Brother Tiger, all ready with his stripy coat, came to the market and waited Waiting, prowling, he called Sister Chicken. Sister Chicken. Waiting and waiting and waiting. But Sister Chicken never arrived. And he heard that Brother Anansi had taken Sister Chicken to the dance. And from that day to this, that is why tigers angry, snarling, and looking for brother and Nancy. Thanks to Toop for that. Poor old tiger. Fancy being rejected by a chicken. I hope your friends don't treat you like that. What would you do if you were Tiger and a Nancy had danced off with your friend? Thank you for listening, especially all of you in Ottawa and Canada. Now, time to dip into my bag of happies and say some thank yous. You've all been busy drawing and sending wonderful pictures of our stories. Freddie from Midhurst in West Sussex sent an animated picture of the three spinning sisters. I love the ant with the big foot and the bossy queen and the way you've labelled all the characters. Super great writing too. Thanks, Freddie. And what great pictures from Barrett, who is five, in Ontario. I love the picture of Pip and the Moon Rabbit story. I really like the way the Moon Rabbit is holding the toffee rice cake and how you've included the winding steps going up to the monastery and the moon beyond. And I love your cheeky leprechaun and your picture of the scary red-eyed Baba Yaga. Keep up the drawing, Barrett. I based that story on my dog, Pip. So, for anyone who wants to see what Pip looks like, there's a photograph on our Facebook page next to Barrett's story. And sisters Aria, who is five, and Emma, who is eight, from Castle Rock in Colorado, have sent some marvellous pictures. Emma has drawn a very friendly snow wolf and Aria has drawn a lovely drawing of the three spinning sisters. I like the way you framed your picture by putting everyone inside the palace. And I love the little window in the roof. It feels kind of hopeful and magical. Thank you. And five-year-old Hira has sent a great picture of Nora and the ackee fruit. I love Nora's bright stripy dress and the way she's being grumpy and is shouting out, I'm not giving the river one of my ackies. Thanks very much for sharing that, Hera. And thanks to Olivia, who is five and three quarters from New York, for her picture of Fox at a party. There's lots of energy and fun in your picture, Olivia. I wonder if you've ever had a party where a fox showed up. Thanks very much for sharing that. And five-year-old Fern from Bristol has sent a very funny picture of Bikku Bai and the coconut with all the characters swinging from the coconut tree. I love the bark on your tree too, and the camel. Thanks, Fern. And Lila, who is eight, has drawn a very sunny picture of the three little pigs. I love the three houses made of straw, bricks and sticks. And Mr Wolf just peeping into the side of the picture, which is very clever. 
Thanks very much for sharing it, Lila. And, wow, five-year-old Nixon has been very busy colouring lots of Super Great Kids stories pictures. These are amazing, Nixon. I love your style. The Snake King with his bright headdress is magnificent. And Nancy looks so cheeky. And I love the huge sun in that picture. And what a funny drawing of Tiddlink laughing with the electric eel trying to make him giggle. Thank you so much for sharing all these pictures with us. And six-year-old Jonathan from the Sunny Isles in Florida has used a lot of imagination, combining several different stories within one picture. I can spot the house made of bricks with a straw roof from the Three Little Pigs and the stick woman and the parrot from the parrot's advice and a little piggy. It's a bit like a puzzle picture. Thanks very much, Jonathan. Great fun. And siblings Lyra, who is four, and Jasper, who is two, from Bellingham in Washington, are on an exciting road trip in California. And they listen to lots of our stories while they're travelling. They've sent some bright, energetic pictures of Baby Turtle from Coyote and the Baby Turtle Story, with all the purple berries, and Turtle with his hard shell, and another of the fairy from The Tramp and the Boots. The fairy is holding one buttercup yellow boot in each hand. Thanks very much for sharing them. And last but not least... Eleanor, who is five from Sprotley in Hull, has sent a great picture of the snake sister at the seaside with a tiny snake slithering along the big yellow beach next to her sister. And thanks for the voice message too, Eleanor. You're very good at speaking. That'll help with your storytelling. Keep telling those stories. That's it for this week. Do keep listening. More thanks for pictures next week. And I'd like to say a very big thank you to all our subscribers. You're helping us to keep making this podcast. A big thanks to Kofi supporters, Rihanna Soros and Ranjit Jala and Christine Owen H and Kate and August. Thanks also to Patreon subscriber Rihanna, who I suspect is Rihanna Soros. Let us know if you're an Apple subscriber and you'd like a shout-out, as we can't see your names. If you'd like to give a one-off donation or any amount on Ko-fi, or subscribe to our podcast on Patreon and get bonus stories, early access and advert-free, then go to our website on supergreatkidsstories.com or to subscribe to Apple, go to Apple Podcasts. Or, if you like us, do tell a friend about our stories. Or maybe give us a review. If you like today's story, we have another trickster story from Kate Corkery coming up to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. So look out for that. That's it for this week. Keep telling those stories to anyone who'll listen. I'll see you next week. This podcast was produced at Wardour Studios in London. London.